The eight men arrested for running internet dating scams in Cape Town. Now, South African and U.S. law enforcement agencies have arrested at least six members of the Niger Black Axe Mafia Syndicate. The Nigerian behind an online fraud network which engineered scams worth more than $60 million. The Black Axe Brotherhood. It's a cult, a secret society, and the media calls it a mafia. You see, Black X is a powerful organization that has infiltrated structures of society and government. Members are called the X-Men and the enforcers are called butchers. You see, membership to these cults is outlawed in Nigeria. You can get up to 20 year prison sentence for being an active member. It's been said that politicians pay these groups to forcefully win elections locally all the way to national elections. This is alleged. Now these cult gangs are known to use extreme violence to keep control over their territory. Now the government has used their services in tax collection as well because of their reputation as enforcers. Now over the years, the gang has expanded their operations outside of Nigeria where besides drugs and human trafficking, business fraud and romance scams is their biggest money makers. Now since 2021, there's been reports of Black X having a strong presence in South Africa, especially Cape Town. Now, before we dwell deep into their activities, let's look at their origins. Now, South African and U.S. law enforcement agencies have arrested at least six members of the Nigerian Black Axe Mafia Syndicate in Cape Town, South Africa. The group believed to be behind hundreds of thousands of Roman scams were reportedly arrested in the raid in the early hours of Tuesday morning. Black Ox is also alleged to have scammed company millions of cash through cybercrime involving business email compromise fraud. They were on to build a powerful international network. It has a strong presence in Italy. Several of its members were arrested there in April and faced about 100 charges including drug and people trafficking, prostitution and internet fraud. See, to understand Black X, you have to understand the neo-black movement of Africa and the Nigerian Civil War or the Biafra War. Now, in the 1970s, Nigerian students founded a fraternity to fight against oppression and racism. Now, the neo-black movement or the NBM is a non-profit organization with the pan-Africanist ideology and their motto is equality and social justice for black people. You see, some are accusing the NBM of being Black X. It's been said that the NBM is a public representative and the Black X is a street representative. It's almost like Kosatu having enforcers on the streets and colleges or universities who will kill to enforce their ideologies. You see, the NBM members have denied these claims and said the NBM and Black X are not the same thing. Some of these movements were started by intellectuals, but over time, they got infiltrated by criminal elements. MBM of Africa is a Pan-African organization. It's an organization born with a very wonderful and positive ideology. An ideology that is rooted in Pan-African in, in, in Pan principles. And that ideology will hold dear up till today. MBM is not a secret organization. It's an organization that has its constitution. And that constitution is subservient to that of uh, any country where it is, uh, exists. And members are obligated to obey such laws. And when members of our organization are found wanting, we do the right thing either by sanction, suspension, or expulsion, as the case may be. Now, to summarize the Nigerian civil war that happened after their independence, you see, in Nigeria, there's three major groups the House of Fulani, the Yoruba, and the Igbos. Now, the other two major groups, which was the House of Fulani and the Yoruba, were fighting and mistreating the Igbos. You see, they were more like ethnic tribal wars that were happening. But also, later on, they were sponsored by BP and Shell to destabilize these regions for the oil that's there. Now, the Igbo people, eventually, they wanted to separate themselves from Nigeria and start their own state or country of Biafra. But the government wouldn't let that happen. Remember, because of their sponsors and the oil that's in the region. Now, during the Civil War, Black X was used as a paramilitary group 
to assist the army in keeping the people of Biafra in check, if you know what I mean. Now, after the civil war, the government abandoned these groups. Now, for these groups to still maintain the power that they had and the prestige in a way and the money, they became a fully fledged criminal gang and took control over these territories that they were presiding over. Now, over time, politicians, if they want to govern in these regions, they have to have an alliance with the gang. Now, it still puts the gang in a position of power. Now, with Nigeria having 25 million unemployed people, which majority is young people, it's easy to recruit members into these gangs. You see, the Black X gang has been operating for decades now in Nigeria, and it is amongst the most feared organized crime syndicate. They call him the Godfather. They say it commands the loyalty and votes of thousands of men in Benin. He claims he provides protection. If they call me if there's crisis, it won't take me seconds, I'll be with them. And that crisis will be resolved. They believe on me with that. Kabaka has been a member of the Neo Black Movement since he was a young man. He says he joined seeking protection from assassins. They were looking for a way to assassinate us. What are we going to do? We don't have money to protect ourselves. We don't have money to take police. We not join the 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 black what they call black house Neo Black Movement. Law enforcement in Benin seemed beholden to Kabaka. As he walked, handing out money, a policeman came to salute him. When he got too close, one of Kabaka's boys pushed him aside. Even the state vigilantes seemed loyal to him. You see, the Brotherhood of the X inspires fear in most parts of the world between their criminal activities, their anti-colonial struggle mindset and the superstitions surrounding these gangs. You see, the organization today, it remains one of the most mysterious because members of the Black X have a strong obedience to their leaders. So much so that their identities are a mere speculations. Nobody for sure knows who they are. After weeks of negotiation, the president of the Neo Black Movement agreed to meet me. I had to ask him, face to face, if the NBM is the real power behind the Black Acts. Some people say that the Neo Black Movement of Africa is actually a smoke screen for the Black Acts. How do you react to that? That's your own perspective. I'm very sure nobody will say that. Such kind of information is libellous, is wicked, and is, is a cheap blackmail. MBM and the Black Axe are not the same. Black Axe operate in the secret. We don't even know them. This is what we're talking about. We don't know them. Now, the symbol of the Black X represents cutting the chains off a black man's hands with an X, freeing him from the oppressor or his colonizer. It's kind of a revolutionary anti-establishment mindset. Now, their operations and the Romans schemes you see, the gang runs turfs that are governed by councils, and members of these turfs use various digital platforms to find and interact with their victims. You see, the Roman scam victims, they believe they are in romantic relationships with the person who is using a fake identity. Now, when requested, the victim sends money or items of value overseas, including places like South Africa. You see, sometimes when the victim expresses hesitation in sending money, these guys use manipulative tactics to coerce payments, you see, including threatening the person with distributing their nude pictures, you know, or sensitive information, basically. Business entities are sometimes used to conceal these illegal funds that they get. Now, the Cape Town turf is alleged to have a CEO, a treasury, secretary, and security officer, and they have annual financial reports. <laughs> I'm telling you, these guys are organized, yo. You see, the gang also utilizes financial accounts of other victims to conceal and disguise their illegally obtained funds. 
Now, eight suspected black ex-leaders were arrested in Cape Town and Johannesburg in 2021. They face extradition to the US, where they are charged with stealing more than $6.25 million from Roman scams. So, they were arrested in Parklands in a joint operation between the FBI and the South African Hawks. Often, um, widows and, and people, women who have been newly divorced, they are then, you know, scammed by these people because they go onto these um, dating websites because um, often it's older women, they're too shy to go out and, and, and date socially and openly. So they go onto social media, onto these dating websites. Um, they meet these men on these websites and these guys then promise them the world. And then what happens is that they get very, very familiar with these women and they kind of um, sort out women who have inherited a lot of money, women who um, have, um, you know, have big pensions and women who have lots of savings and that's when they then say to the women you know what i want to come to south africa to come and be with you to come and spend the rest of my life with you but i actually cannot afford to buy a ticket to come to south africa or even to the us or wherever they are the women then say okay fine i will um, send you money and then they'll say oh but i need to pay for a visa the women will then send them more money but at the same time shahan what they do is they then compromise these women's emails and also their bank accounts and they siphon off not just hundreds of rands but millions of, 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 of US dollars. Now in this particular case we're only dealing with alleged crimes having been committed in the United States of America and that is why the FBI got involved and sought the help of their South African counterparts and the eight men were arrested in a place here in Cape Town called Parklands in the Tableview area. Now on other activities, you see, according to a report by the Human Rights Watch in 2007, the Black X recruits its members outside of Nigeria by forcing their hand. You see, the Human Rights Watch has identified dozens of testimonies from Nigerian migrants living in Europe or the United States whose families have been threatened, kidnapped, or even killed in order to encourage them to work for the gang abroad.